This short video shows a 1960s Reed radio control system. You can see the transmitter of its age, which was 10 channel, um, although it's only got five toggle switches, spring centered, which each one controls two channels. Unlike a modern system where you can see the transmitter here and one channel would be considered as the elevator being mode 2. If I move over to the servos you can see the block on the top right is the um, rudder servo if I move that see how slow they are to the left of that is the motor servo engine now that is known as a progressive servo where you flick the toggle switch you just blip it and it stays in the position you left it. Whereas the rudder servo returns to center. But you're using the same action on the toggle switch to control the control surfaces. Down here you can see the elevator servo, which I'll just move back. And you can see there's the metal arm connected to it. And next to it is the trim servo. If I move that, it moves the metal arm slightly, enough to trim out the elevator, the important part of flying model airplanes, as I'm sure all of you know. Here is the battery, um, which was known as a Diet battery, and the aileron servo, which is obviously separate, mounted in the wing or just below, with a bell crank. If I zoom in to the receiver, you can see the reed relay bank at the top right. As I mentioned before, it's 10 channels, although there's five uh, spring toggle switches, uh, which controls uh, two channels. And you have to tune each one of these in. I'm now going to operate the transmitter and you can hear the tones. You won't be able to see the read relays move. And these needed tuning regularly, which I remember very well helping my dad many years ago. I mentioned at the start of this video that there are big differences between this and a 1960s reed set. Well the first big difference is um, that it's totally 2.4 GHz, all modern components. Only the casings, including the DIAP battery, are original, including the output arms of the servos. If I turn the transmitter over, you can see I've retained the original components, all the boards, including the spring switches and I've substituted a, an EverReady battery, just use the case with uh, AA batteries inside to provide the power. It's actually, as I said, a 2.4 GHz transmitter and on the left here, although you can't see it, is the main board of a, um, a Spectrum uh, DX5E which is quite um, a relatively cheap non-computer set you can still buy them on eBay uh, second-hand uh, relatively easily and I must tell you that the the weight of this to fly this in the 1960s it's much heavier than the modern transmitter a lot heavier it's like holding a brick in your hand as you're trying to fly the plane uh, also and you can see the servos if I to flip the transmitter over and turn it on including the receiver and servos the receiver actually houses all the modern 2.4 gigahertz components which you can't see even though I've moved the um, the camera lower and um, they're actually hidden under the main top board which is nothing more than show so when I mentioned the read relays before uh, they're not actually working they're just there for show um, and in fact the uh, the servos as I said the output arms are original bombers and inside there are normal little 
uh, small servos with some ball joint links. Uh, the servo trim uh, for the elevator is actually mainly Bonner, although with a, a relay board as with the other components from Model Radio Workshop, Mike Ridley. Just Google Model Radio Workshop. I will put on uh, with this in the description on YouTube, there'll be a link where you can download all of the components. In fact, even the connector is a modern Dean's micro connector, which I had to get from America. Two three pins stuck together with Sino, which acts as a solver, um, so that you can't break them apart. So everything is a replica, including the sound that you hear. It's just the mini organ electronics. You can buy them on eBay as a little kit, and I've just minimised it. It's actually, although you can't see it, it's hidden under the electronic components. That's actually the piezo sounder, and underneath is a very thin flat board of the uh, components for the mini organ. And I've put the older components the vintage ones from the original receiver on top and that's the first big difference it's 100 percent 2.4 gigahertz therefore 100 percent the same reliability although emulating the 1960s reed setup i understand i've been in touch with phil green uh, from the single channel set uh, site he uh, he does everything from the transmitter end and actually his is simpler than mine. Mine's probably overly complicated. But uh, I, he sent me a, a module, a transmitter module, and I'm gonna build another project very similar. But there is another big difference, which I shall show you. If I turn the transmitter on, the modern transmitter, and move the gear switch down, we now have, because it's modern servos, you can see the aileron, Bonner servos on steroids. The elevator servo doesn't need the trim, you can see the throttle, absolutely normal and you've got the normal trims on the transmitter as you'd expect with a modern set. In other words it flies as a modern, modern set and in effect you've got a wireless body link which means that at a flick of the switch now the reed set transmitter doesn't work flick the gear switch back and you've got full control as with a reed set that's the rudder sorry and there's the aileron moving and the trim servo back to working so in effect you can fly the plane and set it all up as you would do a new model with the modern transmitter and then when you're brave enough switch over to the reed set and perhaps get somebody stood next to you that can take over should you get stuck. For me that's pretty important because uh, apart from the controls being so different to a modern transmitter it's mode one with the elevator on the left and to me that'll be a big difference but I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for watching the video.